In this video, we're going to go over our standard power panel. This is the D10. It will power up to 10 motors. Underneath the cover, there's a blast shield. So if it's getting sprayed, painted, or if they're still mudding, you can put this shield up to make sure your wires don't get messed up. I recommend it. Under that, you'll have all the hardware needed to install it and put the panel cover back on. There is a 10 amp power supply and then 10 ports, 10 fuses. And each one of these has their own light. We also send it with extra fuses in case mistakes are made or wires are broken behind the wall. You'll have a couple extra of these. I do not recommend putting in anything larger than a two amp fuse because after two amps, the motor could heat up past the point that you would want it and possibly catch fire. This power panel will connect directly to a 110. There is a cutout in the bottom of this box for it. Your electrician can install that and then you'll have a nice surface flush mount 90 degree 110. When installing them, use these two lines. These two lines allow you to come in and out in case the uh, sheetrock is 5 8 or half inch or it just got a bad install. They do fit in between a 16 on center stud bay. We know this power supply is hot because this light lights up green and then each one of our fuse lights also lights up green. If anything was to get continuity on this, that green light would go away. These Phoenix connectors come right out. They have four separate wire gates. Each one of these holes will allow one wire in and then it feeds off of the panel. So you can see here we have positive 24 volt DC, then we have negative 24 volt DC, RS45, B, RS 485A. These two typically won't be used. Um, these two, however, with a wired motor are going to be used every time. So it's positive and negative. For positive, we want to use the red wire. For negative, we want to use the black wire. If you are configuring a 485 system, RS 45B will be the blue wire and RS 45A will be what's ever left, typically a white wire. When making up a wire at the panel, I like to have the wire already made up at the motor, just so when I go to make it up, I don't have to worry about anything shocking or shorting out. Go ahead and strip off the jacket. Now, very, very lightly. You don't want to put a big indent on this cutting through the cable on the inside. Once you remove your jacket, you want to check your positive and negative, which is black and red. Make sure that you didn't go and cut those down to the copper. And then on the opposing side, you've got your shield, which this keeps any noise off of the line. And then you've got your RS-45 and then your drain. There's also a pull cord in here. So if you have to go down to another level, you can take that pull cord and uh, it will strip this wire back for you. Since we're doing only RF today, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my blue and white wire. Now, when I strip these, the J Geiger wire is 14 gauge wire, so it's a little bit larger than the hole for the Phoenix connector. So I'm going to strip it at 18 gauge. You can see here, 18 gauge. So I put this in the 18 gauge hole and I only want to strip roughly a quarter of an inch off. Some copper does come off with it, so be careful. You don't want that going into your foot. And then strip the negative at 18. Once you get them stripped, just give them a quick twist so that they all stay in line when you put them inside of your Phoenix connector. Now if you look at the orientation of the Phoenix connector, there's a keyhole on the back side of it. 
that keyhole goes in the down position, okay? You got RS45 positive and negative. Make sure that they're going into the right holes. After you remove your Phoenix connector, remembering which holes you're going to use, we're going to place the wires in. One at a time is easiest. Sometimes you get lucky with both. And then just a quick tighten. Now that you've got that tightened down, you can see I have a little exposed copper right here on the negative wire. Well, if that was to jump over there, I'd be blowing fuses all day long. So let's go ahead and cut that off. Take this back out. Looks like a little longer than a quarter of an inch. I'll cut a sixteenth off. There we go. Now that should ride all the way up to the jacket. And that is wiring an RTS motor. Now wiring an RS-45 where we need both the data lines. We'll go ahead and remove this shield. And I'll take the drain. I don't want to lose the drain. I might need it later on in life. So I'll just wrap it around the jacket. And per the same, we're just going to strip these. I like to use 18 gauge just so I can make sure that it's going to fit inside. A quarter of an inch sticking out. And then for the two data wires, these are 24 gauge, and you can strip them at 24 gauge. Go ahead and give everything a nice, quick little twist so that they all stay together when you put them inside the Phoenix connector. Take the Phoenix connector out. And the way that we set this up was positive and negative, positive's red, negative's black. RS45 A and B. Well, we figured B, blue, and then A can be whatever's left over. It's typically a white or a yellow wire. Mining the keyholes on top of our Phoenix connector here gives us orientation. So this is our orientation here. We'll go ahead and put these in power first, and then we'll install data afterwards. So B is blue and A is white. Go ahead and lock those into position. And you'll know when it's locked, it does cinch up pretty good. And when you get it, give it just a little extra sixteenth of an inch. You don't have to go crazy on it. It just needs a little bit of persuasion. All right, no exposed copper, looks good to me. I'll go ahead and install it. And that's installing a RS-485 powered motor.